Well, hey guys, I put on a gray long sleeve shirt because that is the color of the sky today. We're having some grazy weather today. It's supposed to get a ton of rain. But I don't know what I'm gonna do today if I'm gonna go out because when, when we get heavy rain, I don't like driving around because some, certain areas the water will collect and it can be a pretty, you know, hairy, scary, like turn around, don't drown, if you know what I mean, uh, till it drains drained out. It doesn't help that those leaf blowers blow the leaves into the drains and clog them up. So it takes longer for the water to drain. I don't understand. I don't understand leaf blowers. I know people complain about them. It's almost a meme or whatever at this point. I do not understand leaf blowers because they just blow the leaves around somewhere else, kick up a bunch of dust and make a ton of noise. Why are we doing this again? I don't understand. Let me know in the comments. Is there a good reason for leaf blowing? I'll tell you, that is something about apartment living. I do not envy having to maintain a yard at all. Uh, now, of course, I still have to listen to the leaf blower because my apartment complex uses it. One, fortunately, they don't blow it like early in the morning. My other apartment where I lived, if you guys have been following me for a while, the first apartment I had here, they would crank up that leaf blower at like six in the morning on Saturday, I swear. I'm exaggerating, but it was, it was noisy. And the guy would just like come out right under my bedroom window. And you, people would be like, put, put headphones in, put earbuds in. It's hard to drown that noise out. I mean, you almost need like soundproofing. Uh, all that complaining aside has given Peter Thomas Roth enough time to incubate on my face. Going through the motions with this, guys. You are not gonna hear me hype this up or put it down. I'm pretty, pretty neutral. And that, that's, that's what happens, you know? All right, coming in with the chestnut AHA. But here, what, frustrates me is that when they do the leaf blowing, they always blow the leaves on my little patio and I have to go out there and sweep them back out. It's like this back and forth with the leaves. <laughs> so I mentioned these guys in my best Amazon purchases of 2023. And I'm telling you, these are little things to clean under your nails when you wash your hands. I just wash this and reuse it like over and over again. Before I get started with my skincare routine, I wash my hands and I get under my nails. Like you would be surprised the dust and things that comes out from under your nails. So I highly recommend these. They are amazing. Coming in with the Healthy Renew Face Serum for a little pack of hydration. Sunscreen of the day is gonna be the Ionic Centella Calming Daily Sunscreen SPF 50. Came in one of the advent calendars. I've really been enjoying this. It's like a little bit richer in consistency compared to like the High Alocica or the um, Key Calm, which I just reordered, I know. <laughs> I know, I know, like don't you have enough sunscreens? No, I love that one. Um, this one's a little bit richer like a thicker a slightly thicker moisturizer but it's kind of similar overall easy around the eyes too as i sip my coffee check out this has been my latest hairdo um it's kind of like uh messy bun slash bow on the top of my head made out of my hair but I just use I don't know if you can see I just use the little flower clips I've been liking wearing my hair like this sipping on my coffee I'm about to actually get dressed and get ready all right I just finished getting my makeup ready so looking a little bit more alive and ready to enter the world on my lips I'm wearing that Peri Para ink velvet along with their lip liner that I got in my one of the K-Beauty advent calendars. I have just been loving those. I saw you can get them on iHerb in a variety of different colors, but I resisted because y'all know I have a bit of a bad habit of collecting lip products. I have so many lipsticks, lip glosses, lip balms. It's wild. It's a bit of a problem, but I've really been happy with these this pairing because of the ease of application and the longevity. Like, they stay on really well. 
I was just listening to Red Hot Chili Peppers on Spotify. That's one downside of, uh, you know, videos and content creation is that I can't just freely play music that I like in the background. Um, at least with like the short form of content, you can kind of do that, but not always. Anyway, uh, yeah, I've been trying to listen to more music and less like internet babble. <laughs> Still loving this little makeup mirror I got from the Amazonian a while back. Yeah, I still really like it, and it's perfect for makeup application. All right, fixing to go run some errands, and, and I'm just wearing these joggers because it's not, it's not cold out. These are from Halara, and I've got a ribbed shirt from Walmart. I love these. They're the No Boundaries brand. I have a few of them and they're really comfortable. They hold up really well in the wash too. Well guys, I'm on my way out running some errands per usual and man, it is dreary. I was reading an article about the, the this resident union in uh, Buffalo, New York, uh, you know, medical residents. So physicians in, in training, you know, you're an MD, but you don't, you know, you're, you've still got your training going on, so to speak. And uh, what they did um, is kind of interesting. They, they put up a billboard um, basically advertising that they were, you know, put up a billboard to make it known to the public that they were being paid essentially less than minimum wage. And, you know, it sparked a lot of debate, controversy, many opinions, because um, it's a controversial topic uh, about resident pay and resident work-life balance. So, you know, the the old school traditional model of residency, I mean old, old, like fortunately I didn't go through this, but there have been even more reforms above and beyond when I was a resident. Um, the old school model was like, it was called residency because you basically lived in the hospital. And yes, it's a, it's a form of employment, but like the whole purpose and you know the attitude around it and the mentality is that you know you're gonna live in in this environment and in complete and utter total 24-7 um, immersion in every possible learning opportunity um, and you know historically that was obviously to the detriment of well-being uh, health uh, and, and probably patient care let's face it if your doctor is working around the clock with no sleep and not ever going leaving the hospital um, probably gonna compromise care I don't know you know I'm not and I'm not up to date on you know those statistics I know people probably can pull those out you know on how things have changed with work hour restrictions. Now we have work hour restrictions. Residents can't be in the hospital more than X number of hours. But um, anyway, so this union has formed of, of these residents in Buffalo, New York, <clears throat> to make the public aware of the fact that they're not being paid um, what other residents throughout the state of New York, namely New York City, are being paid. Um, and, and they, you know, are saying like, well, when you calculate our pay rate on an hourly rate, we're making way below minimum wage because they make, I guess, 60000 a year. Uh, but, you know, a resident's going to work 80, 80 hours a week is the restriction, but in reality, you do end up working um, above that. Uh, you know, usually 100, 100 hour, 120 hour work week. So, of course, you know, the old school folks were chiming in in the comments, like, how dare you complain, like, 60000 a year, do you know how many people would be elated to make that, um, yada, 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 you have your basic needs met, like, you should not be, you know, complaining about money. Let me know what you guys think, like, do you think these residents are just being whiny, um, and that, you know, they should embrace the fact that they are in this amazing training situation. I mean, I, honestly, I don't know anything about the residency program that they're in, so it could be, it could be bad on, on many fronts. Uh, but I just thought it was interesting, you know, the comments from them. <laughs> it's just like, 
You know when kids complain about something and there's that trope or whatever parent being like, when I was your age, I had to go walk to school barefoot in the snow, uphill, both ways. That it was exactly the nature of these comments. Like, when I was a resident, we didn't have work hours. We had to, we had to do our own blood draws. And we didn't have lab checks. We had to carry the patients on, a, on our backs up a hill in the snow. <laughs> Nowadays, residents are lazy. Don't want to work. <laughs> uh, I'm not joking. I mean, I am joking, but I'm not. That, that was the tone. You know, as a resident, you do have those heavy duty, you know, might have those heavy duty loans looming over you that you need to pay off. If there's some kind of, you know, child care you need to pay for, well, you know, that starts to yeah, I mean, I could see how that'd be really tough to live off of, honestly, as a, as a resident. When I was a resident um, in Manhattan, in New York, I I had my basic needs met, but I really did um, often worry about being able to like make ends meet just because the rent was so expensive, especially my first year as a resident. You make a little, like a little bit more each year. So by the second or third year, it was not quite so, but you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, you know, watchful with the, the, the tab, if you will, and, and watchful of my spending. So it was doable. And the thing about, about it too, is like, you know, you can tolerate things like that. At least, you know, I was, it, it was a different situation for me too. Like I don't have children. I, I didn't have mouths to feed and, and, and daycare. Um, and, and those kind of expenses. I didn't have, you know, it was just me. Check it out, you guys. The Hydro Boost Water Cream, $22.99. It's a pretty good deal. Now through February 4th. I currently have this in action. I really like it. It has urea in it, um, which is good for the moisture barrier and for hydrating the skin and softening dry, rough skin. It also has hyaluronic acid much thicker consistency compared to the old formula. I also like the gel version of this, but this is what I'm currently using. These are nice, these Nautica Ladies Quarter Zip Pullovers, $16.99. They're cute. They have the little boat. I specifically came here for this. I want a stock pot. $24.97 and it has the built-in strainer because I like to make that um, lentil pasta a fair amount and um, I want a stock pot to do that. I've been using that little um, blue splatterware pot from a FabFitFun box and while I love that thing, I think this would be better for cooking that pasta. Someone just abandoned their Starbucks drink there on the Blackstone that's set up here. These look like fun to me, <laughs> like uh, for cooking outside, 400 bucks. But they have a mini one, $159.99. That's more doable. It even has its own carrying bag. Hmm. Austin wants some more washcloths ten dollars for the four of these doesn't seem too bad oh my gosh look at this chocolate easter bunny he's huge 4.4 pounds sixty dollars he's cute <laughs> if you had a big family that'd be fun well there she is the new pot it's really nice um Good things about this green pan company nice and weighty it's dishwasher safe so that was a that's always a prerequisite with me I do not enjoy doing dishes by hand whatsoever yeah this little blue and white splatterware um, pot as you can see I use it a fair amount that's what I've been trying to make uh, the lentil pasta in and it's okay but with those lentil and chickpea pastas the water gets like super foamy and it always ends up going all over the place. As you can see, I need to clean off my stove top anyway. But yeah, now I have a good size pot for that. 
Well, hey guys, I just hopped out of the shower and taking my own advice, don't store your razor in the shower because it will dull the blades a lot faster. I discovered these Bic razors. You're like, wow, wow, Andrea, Bic razors? Like what planet have you been living on? Yes, I know Bic razors, Bic razors, but these Bic razors are so worthy of your time, okay? Because they're called the Easy Rinse Blades. I got these because I needed some new razors and they were an Ibotta deal. So if you're not familiar, Ibotta is a rebate app I use. You can get cash back on stuff. And I like to use it when I need stuff like this, especially because they always have some kind of razor on there. Something with these blades, y'all know, like around the ankles, that 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 is just, ready to be sliced, okay? I always get a little nick there. And it's so annoying because you're in the shower and the water's flowing, so it beckons the blood flow. Whereas if you cut yourself and there's dry air, it kind of helps the clot form. But when you're in the shower, it's like, there's no stopping it in there, right? Anyway, this seems to cut hair and not skin. I mean, I haven't obviously tried to cut myself with it, but it is, it's amazing and it gives a really good, nice and close, but not aggressive shave. When you shave, do not press super hard. I've had to put a lot of effort into training myself not to press so hard uh, because when you press hard, that is really harsh on your skin, contributes to razor burn. You don't need to press that hard. I mean, it's just, you're just cutting hair at the surface of the skin. It's the easy rinse. They were not inexpensive, I will say that, because there were only two in the container in the package. And with the I bought a rebate, I think it was like a dollar back, but man, worth it. So I'm definitely not letting that get crusty or rusty in there. Um, just about finished with this DHC cleansing oil. I've been working on this, focus, I've been working on this for a long time and I really like it. 150 ml. I've probably been using this for about five months now. So I've continued on with the Briogeo. This is good, Rosarco. Maybe you guys commented today um, on what Rosarco is. <laughs> I could look it up, you know? We have this thing these days, the Google, the Google, but I don't want to mine it anymore, my data. Next thing you know, I'll be, it, Rosarco is probably some expensive flower somewhere and Google will be Rosarcoing on nonstop. So just between you and me. So one thing about hair is that it's a lot more fragile when it's wet, which is another reason why I like to use these microfiber towels to get the majority of the water out of my hair, because then I spray a product like that in and I can comb my hair. See, if, I, if you comb your hair when it's wet, like really wet, more prone to, to breakage and frizz. So that's another reason why I like those. Now, the exception is people who have really like curly textured hair, they detangle, you know, their hair type, it's best to detangle while the hair is wet. So I'm using another shampoo with methyl isothiazolamone in it. Again, do as I say, not as I do, but I bought this somewhat impulsively. I was on Amazon. I'm always on the lookout for fragrance-free hair care products. And Hosk is a brand that I love actually, but I forgot they put methyl isothiazolamone in everything. I mean, all their shampoos, all of them, so annoying. I'd forgotten that and I saw and bought and have been liking, but I'm resistant to recommend to you guys because of the methyl isothiazolinone issue, common contact allergy. I mean, it's really sensitizing, but I've been using it anyway. Um, it's their new fragrance-free, I bought this on Amazon, fragrance-free shampoo, and conditioner. I really, I really am begging them to reformulate the shampoo without methyl isothiazolone on because I've been loving these. Uh, because while they're fragrance free, it's a really pleasant experience shampooing with these. Made with oats, and I think that's really what it all is. I'm telling you, oats elevate a fragrance free product and bring it some, it's, it, they add something to a fragrance free product that replaces the need for fragrance as an experiential aspect. These are good, but they ruin it with the methyl isothiazolone. Like when it comes to um, 
allergens. The methyl isothiazolinone is a bigger risk for developing an allergy than fragrance and shampoo because you rinse off the shampoo, but that methyl isothiazolinone is, is such a bugaboo that it, it can be a problem. So it's a disappointment because these are good. Like I love the way my hair looks with these too. I mean, a lot of fragrance-free shampoos, they are boring. And sometimes there, is it just me? Something about removing the fragrance, the shampoo somehow becomes a lot more like drying. I've noticed that too. And fragrance-free shampoos are a lot more expensive, I guess because there's not as much of a market for them. So they have to jack up the price to compensate. Because it's like, why are they charging so much? They don't have to put a fragrance blend in there and be all jazzy and proprietary with it. But I guess, like I said, there's not a market for fragrance-free hair care. Anyway, y'all, I'm going to wrap this vlog up here. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Thank you for making it to the end. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.